This is part two of chapter 20, uh, Pediatric Variations of Nursing Interventions. So infection control is not that different from adults except that we have a lot more infectious diseases at the hospital. We're just like with adults worried about nosocomial infections, so gel in and gel out at every room. We don't want to bring a germ from one room to another, no cross-contamination. We're going to do standard precautions on everyone. So that gel in, gel out. You are going to see at children's, um, we don't necessarily use gloves with every patient encounter. If there's any chance that there are body fluids, then certainly we're going to wear gloves. Um, but just doing vital signs, things like that, the gel in, gel out um, is adequate. As far as patients, clean gloves are really, they're clean. They're not sterile. They're not that much cleaner than your hands. They're only as clean as the hands that got shoved into the box to pull them out. So um, for children, wearing gloves can be a little scary and it feels very funny and very artificial. So you're going to see some people are starting to do gloves with every patient encounter, um, but many do not. And that's the gel in gel out is required. Gloves when there's not any body fluids present um, is not necessarily required at children's. So transmission based re precautions. You're going to see we have kids um, lots on contact precautions. So anything that can come out of them that has germs makes them on contact precautions. If it can come out of with a cough um, and come out in those droplets from their nasal oral or nasal secretions then they're going to be on droplet precautions. We have lots of respiratory illnesses, so you're going to see that. Airborne, um, you don't see as much. This can float a lot farther in the air than droplet. And uh, if you have a, a child with airborne precautions, um, TB in particular, you cannot take care of that at the hospital. The, the hospital doesn't um, fit you for the N95 masks to be able to take care of TB. So those are patients that at Valley Children's you won't be able to take care of. Restraining kids. Usually we're restraining in order to to start an IV or do a procedure. So first we're gonna decide is it necessary and we're gonna try and go with the least restrictive thing we need to. So if we can have the nurse or the family member, someone hold the child, therapeutic holding means they're held. You tuck in all their extremities and you wrap your arms around them and you hug them to your chest nice and tight. It feels very comforting. It feels very good. And then you just take the one thing you need, the hand or the foot or the whatever, out and start your IV or or give your injection or whatever you're going to do. We can have family members hold them like that or another nurse. And there are studies that show that children don't cry as loudly or as long when they're in that therapeutic big hug with just the one extremity um, out as if we wrap them up and swaddle them and push them down. Uh, so but that is a, an option. Sometimes that child is thrashing and crying and fighting and there's just no way to to do that therapeutic holding. So then we have to wrap them in a blanket or a sheet, whichever, and have, again, just the one extremity you're going to work on exposed. Um, jacket restraints we really don't have at children's or we don't really use limb restraints. We occasionally will take a limb and, and tie it to the edge of the bed because the child keeps pulling out an IV or pulling out, trying to pull out an endotracheal tube, something. So we do that sometimes. Elbow restraints. 
we have some pictures here. Here's a child swaddled not very well, actually. They're pretty, I think they could get out of that. But here's elbow restraints. So they can still use their hands. Actually, kids can still do some surprising things, coloring and things, but can't bring their hands up to their mouth um, or their face or, you know, just can't bend those elbows. So when we position a child for a procedure, our goal is to not let them move because that will make the procedure not successful and more painful. So we're trying to minimize movement and minimize discomfort. Make sure we've explained to them what we're going to do and tell them what we need them to do. Um, if it's something very painful, think about analgesia and or sedation and then if we need to restraining them. Here's a child being held by a parent. Um, I would say more of a hug is is usually better um, but this child seems to be very cooperative. More cooperative than most but that's the idea of, of holding them in kind of a hug position. Collecting urine will do in and out catheters, but we'll also sometimes do a urine collection bag. If it has to be sterile, it's got to be that clean catch in and out catheter. 24-hour um, urine collections would be the same thing as your adult. Remember, you want to, right after they void, dump that urine, and that is the time you start it. So you know you're starting it on an empty bladder. And you want everything that comes out of the bladder for the next 24 hours. But you toss that first one and begin it then. Uh, stool specimens, we can get that out of a diaper. Just using a tongue blade and scooping it and putting it in our, our specimen cup. Uh, blood, we'll do venipunctures, but we'll also do heel sticks on, on infants and finger sticks um, on older kids just kind of depends and here's a picture of putting on that urine bag the hardest place to get it to seal is right down in here so I would say that's where you want to start to make sure you get right down deep and uh, then you put put the uh, rest of it on so giving medications to kids we're gonna make sure that we are giving a safe dose and we're going to calculate that every patient every med when you're at clinical I want you to calculate the usual dosage and make sure that we're in a safe dose almost all of our meds are done based on um, kilograms they're weight based some of our meds are body surface areas that's primarily your chemo drugs which you won't be giving anyway but um, our drugs are weight based because what a infant needs and what a 14 or 16 year old needs clearly is going to be different so we don't have just a set average or usual dosage so you do want to check the dosage and check that it's safe identify the patient make sure both the child and the family knows what you're going to be doing and we give some oral meds I think in the adult world you're used to giving lots of oral meds and we certainly give some but I don't think we give as many as what you're used to. Intramuscular injections we do some not that many. We do far more IV meds than we do intramuscular. Um, subcutaneous and intradermal when we have no other route that will work we do those um, but again IV is our most common. And then we have lots of NGOG and GT meds, uh, nasogastric infants, neonates will have oral gastric tubes. They don't really have a gag reflex. So rather than go down the nares and block their one of their nares, we go orally. And then we also have a lot of kids who have gastrostomy tubes. So you will get to do that this semester at Children's. Rectal, we give a few rectal meds, not that many. Um, eye drops, ear drops, and nasal sprays and or drops 
we give quite a few of those and hopefully you'll get a chance to do those and quite a few aerosolized meds at Valley Children's um, RTs give all of the nebulized treatments but the nurses do the MDIs the you know like albuterol um, MDI puffs so depending on what unit uh, some of the units the nurses give those so we'll get some chance to do those so here's a nurse giving this child uh, oral med you don't want to put medicine at the tip of the child's mouth because it's real easy to spit it out you want to go down the cheek fairly far back not so far back that you make them gag you want to have them sitting up if they're laying down again they're more likely to to aspirate um, I would actually lean this child back a little more than she's doing but she's kind of got the child pinned but against her side and then is holding this other hand down so that the child can't um, grab anything when you give an injection on a child we always use that vastus lateralis until the child's been walking for at least a year then you can use that ventral gluteal but uh, most of the injections um, are going to be into that vastus lateralis and you can see she's laying across the the trunk and has her other arm across the legs I would say she'd do better having a second person help her IVs you're gonna see we have lots of IVs and um, all of our central lines we put a little bit of heparin in them because they're so small a little bit of blood backing up in them will clot and we'd lose them so if they're a central line we do a heparin lock if it's a peripheral then we do a saline lock you're going to see for those central lines we have um, non-tunneled catheters uh, tunneled catheters so the brand we have are Broviax for those tunneled catheters hopefully you remember that from your skills and then you'll also see uh, metaports those implanted ports and we have lots of pick lines it is cost effective to put in a pick line if a child's going to be on IV antibiotics or IV fluids for a week so a 10-day course of IV antibiotics we would rather put in a pick line than give them several uh, peripheral IVs Here are some pictures for you. Just kind of, if you remember, we're going to be threading that central line threads right up into the superior vena cava, or on infants, will come from the leg as well and go into the superior vena cava. This is a Broviac here. So that's the tunneled catheter. It probably enters the venous system up at that subclavian but then tunnels under the skin to where it comes out. Usually they try and keep it somewhere on the chest, but occasionally I've seen them pretty far laterally. And this is a metaport that has been accessed. So a needle is in it. You can take this needle out and the metaport, here's the metaport, it's underneath the skin, except when the needle is in place. And here is a pick line. And as I said, you'll see lots of those at, at Children's. We use a lot of pick lines. That one's a double lumen. Um, you'll see that occasionally. Most of ours are single lumen, though, that you're going to see. And gastrostomy tubes. Uh, you'll see quite a few of those. And I have some pictures here. Um, this is the type of gastrostomy we use. It's a Mickey. The nice thing is it's flat with nothing hanging out when it's not in use. On infants, on neonates, we like to go oral rather than blocking their nares. We do sometimes do nasal um, NG tubes, and we usually use the very soft silastic ones. They have a guide wire to make it a little stiffer while you're putting it down, and then you take that guide wire out, and it's thinner and softer. Remember, infants are obligatory nose breathers, so we really want to make sure we're not occluding that whole nares.